Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session of the Bible study on this 31st day of July 2022. This is going to be our um, basic Hebrew portion of the class, and then at about 3.05, we will break the video and hand it over to Brother Sheets so that he can um, continue walking us through Genesis uh, chapter one here. So when we uh, met last week, we were talking about the Hebrew alphabet, and we had indicated that the Hebrew alphabet is written from right to left. So English is written from left to right, but Hebrew is written from right to left. And we also indicated that this alphabet consists of 22 letters. And those letters are, as we indicated, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wal, Zion, Cheth, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kof, Resh, Sim, Shin, Tal. All of these letters are consonants. And yes, there are 23 letters represented here, but two of those, the sin and the sheen, are in fact actually the same letter as we would see if we were um, taking a look at Psalm 19. We'd be able to see that. And so the forms of the letters, Aleph is a guttural, it's a very um, silent, sound so it does not make any sound unless it has a vowel underneath it and then you pronounce the sound of the vowel. So Aleph is the first letter. Then we have Baith and we talked about the fact that Baith has two different uh, pronunciations. If it has the dot in the middle we call that dot the dogesh lene. Then it is pronounced hard, b. If it does not have the dog line, then it is pronounced soft, like our v sound. Then we also have the gimel, which is another one of these letters that can take the dog line. With the dog line, it is pronounced as a hard g, g. Without the dog line, it is pronounced as a soft g sound, g. And again, that's one of those things you'll do naturally. Then we have the Daleth. This is another one of those letters that has two pronunciations. With the Dagesh Lene, it is pronounced D, like a hard D as in dog. Without the Dagesh Lene, it is pronounced as sort of a voiced TH sound. So, V, V. Then we have the He as well. This is pronounced like our H sound. And then notice as well as we take a look at this that there is in fact that a uh, little bit of that break between the, uh, the left side vertical and the top horizontal. And that is one of those things that helps to differentiate the hay from another letter, the chayth. Then we have the wow as well, looks like a vertical line slightly curved, and this is pronounced wuh, wuh. And then we also have the zion, pronounced z, looks like the wow with a little top hat. Then we have the faith. And this is where you can most certainly see the, um, the difference between the hay and the chayth, where the hay only has that little bit of a break, uh, the chayth is solid, there is no break. So that helps to distinguish between those. And we discussed how that is a tittle, a distinguishing mark. Then there is the teith, and this particular letter is pronounced like a soft T. Um, it's not pronounced in the same place as our T. That is by placing the tip of the tongue right behind the top uh, front teeth, but rather it's pronounced with the um, tongue pressed against the hard palate. And so this is that duller T sound. 
We have the Yod, smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet, looks like a little right uh, corner and right angle. And so this is pronounced Y. Then we have the Kaf. This is another one of those letters that is pronounced in two different ways. With the Dagesh Lene, it is pronounced K. And then without the Dagesh Lene, it is pronounced K. So soft. And again, you'll do that naturally. This third character here, that is what we call the final calf that occurs at the end of letters when calf is the last letter of a word. Then we have the lameth, pronounced l. Then we also have the mem, and mem as well has a final form. So this form on the right hand side of the screen is the way that the mem looks when it occurs as the last letter in a word. Then we also have the noon. This as well has two different ways of writing it. Um, the one on the right hand side, that is the form that the noon takes when it is the last letter in a word. So that's the final noon. With these final forms, there is no difference in pronunciation. It's just a different way of writing it to signify that, oh yes, this is the last letter of the word. Then we also have the psalmic, pronounced as kind of a dull S again with the tongue uh, pulled back a little bit further so that it is pressed against the hard palate. So this is more of that sound. Then we have the ion and this again, this is one of those sounds that does not have an exact equivalent in English. But basically, if you take the, uh, the back of your tongue and press it against the back of your throat, that'll give you the ion sound. To our ears, it's almost silent, but there are some uh, languages that they take this and it becomes the ng sound, that ng but we don't say n, this is ayan. Then we also have the pe. This again is one of those letters that has two different pronunciations. With the dogesh lene, it is pronounced p, and then without the dogesh lene, it is pronounced f, like our ph sound in phonics. The pe also has a final form, a form that it takes when it is uh, the last letter in a word, and that is the last character that you see there on the right-hand side. And we also have the sade. This is a T-S sound, so sade, we hear this sound when we say the word sar, for example. And sade as well has a final form. That is the form here on the right-hand side. And this is the form that the sade takes when it is occurring at the end of a word. And then we have kof. This is the k sound. Very similar to the sound that the calf makes, but it's pronounced a little bit farther back in the throat. So instead of pressing the back of the tongue up against um, the boundary between the hard palate and the soft palate, you pull the tongue back a little bit further so that it's pronounced all the way against the soft palate as well. Then we have the resh, and this it makes the R sound, but not like the R in English. It's almost like it has a little bit more of an H sound on the front, so resh. Then we have the scene and the sheen. So the one on the right-hand side, this is the scene. Notice it has the dot over the left leg. It's pronounced exactly like our S. And then there is the sheen, pronounced like our SH. It has the dot over the right leg. These are the same letters, but just pronounced with uh, two different ways. And then we also have the tau as well. The, and so the tau as well is one of those letters that has two different pronunciations. 
with the dog echelonae, it is pronounced t, and then without the dog echelonae, it is pronounced as a th sound, f, and that is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So thus we have Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Heth, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Pe, Tzade, Kof, Resh, Sin, Shin, and Tal. And that is the Hebrew alphabet. Now, we do want to take a look at how these letters are formed, how they are written. And so to that end, I do have this writing demonstration. And this will help us to note some of the, uh, the differences that uh, in the letters as we go through this. So starting with the Aleph as, an, as our first letter. So starting with the Aleph, we are going to start on the top left-hand side and then okay there it goes so starting at the top left hand side and again being mindful of the fact that this is hebrew so we're going to start writing on the right hand side of the page so starting on the right hand side top left and then I'm going to curve on down toward the middle and then I'll go down toward the bottom right. And then I'm going to come on up to the top right, curve down toward the middle, and then once again cross on over and come on down to the bottom left. And so that is how we write the olive. So again, just taking another look at that. So starting on the top left-hand side, curving on down towards the middle, then towards the bottom right, then starting at the top right, curving toward the middle, and then toward the bottom left as well. So it's basically a total of two curved lines to get that curved X idea. So Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second letter is the Beth. To write the Beth, again, I'm going to start on the top left-hand side, then come straight across, and then I'm going to curve down. So that top right corner there of the base, it's a curve. It's not square, it is curved. And I'm going to come straight on down vertically. Okay, so that gives me my first line. Now, for the second line, I'm going to start on the bottom left so that the line is equal with the top left. So starting there, coming down all the way through to the vertical line, and then coming a little bit beyond it as well. That uh, where the bottom line comes beyond the vertical line, that little tittle there helps to distinguish the base from the calf. And so that is one of those distinguishing marks, helps us to recognize and distinguish between the bath and the calf, where the calf, as we will see later, is curved completely all the way around, kind of like a, a, a horseshoe on its side. The bath is not. It has that curved corner at the top, square corner at the bottom. So Aleph, bath, the next letter is Gimel. So with the gimel, again, I'm going to start at the top left and then come over a little bit. The gimel is a narrow letter, so it's not quite as wide as the olive and the bath. It's about half the width of that. And then I'm going to curve down, come straight down, and so that it's leaning a little bit. And this then because it is leaning a little bit, it needs another leg to support it. So starting at the middle, and then I'm going to draw a line straight on down. 
and that gives us the Gimel, so the Gimel now has a little bit of support. So we have the Aleph, the Beth, the Gimel. Our next letter is Daleth. So Aleph, Beth, Gimel, and Daleth. To form the Daleth, I am once again going to start at the top left and draw a line straight on over toward the right. And then leaving a little bit of a tittle on the other side, I'm going to draw a vertical line so that there is that square corner here with the dollop. Notice as well, as I said, I left a little bit of an overhang beyond the vertical line. That is to help me distinguish this from the reish. The reish has a rounded corner, no tittle off to the side of the vertical line. So just one of those things that helps to distinguish there as well. So we have the aleph, beth, gimel, and daleth. Our next letter is going to be the hay. So with the hay, once again, I'm going to start on the top left and then draw a right my line right over to the top right and then I'm going to come straight down. And then I'm going to write another line on the left-hand side vertical, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a break in between the top vertical line and the horizontal line. And so thus it would look like this. So notice that little gap in between the vertical line and the horizontal line there. So we have Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, Hey. Our next letter is the Wow. And the Wow is basically a curved vertical line. So I'm going to start at the top left. I'm going to curve down a little bit and come straight on down towards the bottom. And so that's how you draw the Wow. So we have the Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, Hey, Wow. Our next letter is the Zion. And so with the Zion, I'm going to draw it exactly in the same way that I drew the wow, except I'm going to give him a little top hat. So thus we have that line curved straight down. And then I draw a slightly angled line at the top, extending beyond the vertical line. And that gives me the Zion. So we have Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion. The next letter is Heth. And Heth, I'm going to draw in exactly the same way that I did the He, except I'm not going to leave a gap. So I'm going to start at the top left, go straight across, then come straight down. And then beginning at the top left again, I'm going to draw a vertical line, no gap. So again, you can see the distinguishing feature then between the heith and the he and the hey. The hey has no gap, the heith has a gap. So these letters again, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Heith. The next letter is Teith. Now, with Taith, I'm going to start in the middle, and then I'm going to come straight up to the top right, come around, give it a little bit of a flat bottom, and then curve up to the left. So again, just demonstrating that again here. We begin in the middle come up at an angle towards the top right, curve around, give it a flat bottom, and then curve back up to the top left. So we have the Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teith, and the next letter is Yod. And Yod is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so I'm going to start at the top left, come over to the top right, and then curve on down slightly. And so that is the oath.
Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Chaf, Teth, Yov, and the next letter is Kaf. So Kaf, I'm going to start at the top left and then come and then curve on down. And then when I reach at the bottom, curve around. It's exactly like that uh, sideways horseshoe. And again, look at the difference between the Beth and the calf here, where the base has a rounded corner on the top right. The bottom right corner is square and the bottom line extends beyond the vertical line. The calf, however, both corners are rounded and there is no extension beyond the vertical line. So Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Chaf, Teth, Yov, Kaf. The next letter is Lameth. Lameth is the only letter that extends beyond the top here, as you can see. So I'm going to stop above, start above the line, come down, then go on over to the top right, then curve around to the bottom left. And so that's how you write the lama. So once again, as we indicated here, starting above the line, coming down, going straight over to the top right, and then curving around towards the bottom left. And that's how you write the lama. So Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lama. The next letter is Mem. So with Mem, I'm going to draw a vertical line and then going back up to the top, going to curve around. So going to curve around over to the top right and then down to the bottom right and then straight on over to the bottom left. So that's how you write the Mem. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yoth, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Noon. Now, Noon, like the Gimel, is another narrow letter. So it's only going to be half the width of the Beth and the Aleph. And what I do is I start at the top left, come on over to the top right, then square corner, vertical down to the bottom right. And then my bottom line is going to extend a little bit beyond the top. So it's going to go on over and you can see how this bottom line is just a little bit longer than that top line there. So we have Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Noon, Next letter is Samic. And with the Samic, I'm going to start at the top. Then I'm going to curve around to the left, back up to the right, and then give him a little top hat as well. So basically, you're writing an O and giving it a little top hat, and the top hat faces towards the left. If you're writing the Sigma in Greek, it's the same thing, except the top hat faces to the right. So they've just flipped the letter. So Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samic. Next letter is Ayan. So with the Ayan, I'm going to start on the top right, curve down to the bottom, all the way down, and give it a little bit of a flat uh, bottom towards the bottom left there come back up to the top left and curve down to the bottom right as well. And it looks a little bit. So, so thus we have that particular letter then. So we have the Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wow, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samic, Ayan. The next letter is the Pe. Like the, ta like the Teth, the Pe starts in the middle so it starts in the middle, curves up to the top left and then over to the top right and around to the bottom left. So that is the pay there. 
Olaf Baith Gimel Dalith He Wild Zine Haith Taith Yod Kaf Lameth Mem Noon Samak Ayan Pe Tsade. So, Sade, what you're going to do is you're going to start at the top left, come down at a diagonal to the bottom right, and then draw a line straight across to the bottom left. And then, starting at the top right, draw a diagonal line towards the middle. And that is the Sade. So, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wild, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Pe, Sade. The next letter is Kof. And with the Kof, I'm going to draw a vertical line beginning at the top and it extends all the way down beyond the line. And then I'm going to come back up to the top and curve over toward the right and then back towards the bottom left. And that's how you write the kof. So we have Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wild, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Tzadeh, Kof, Reish. So with the Reish, I'm going to start over at the top left, come straight over to the top right, and then curve straight down. Notice the difference between the resh and the daleth. The resh has a rounded corner, and there is no tittle that extends beyond the that top corner. The daleth, on the other hand, that corner is square and a tittle does extend. And so that helps to distinguish between the daleth and the arrange. Look for the square and the round corner. Look for the tittle. Those tittles are very, very important. So we have the Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wild, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kof, Reish. And now we come to the scene and the sheen. So for the scene and the sheen, I am going to start at the, yep, I'm going to start at the top right, come straight down, give it a little bit of a flat bottom, come right back up to the top left, and then in the middle, draw a line at a slight diagonal. And then the scene has the dot over the left leg. The sheen is going to be drawn in exactly the same way, so again, you're going to have that curved shape there. So that curved shape with the line in the middle, but the dot goes over the right hand leg instead of over the left hand. So we have the Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Wild, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yod, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kof, Resh, Sin, Sheen, Last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the tau. And with the tau, I'm going to start on the left, top left, come straight over to the top right, curve on down, and then starting at the top left, draw another line straight down. And then notice as well, on the left leg here, we have a little bit of a foot. So it curves in a little bit and then off to the side. And that helps us to distinguish the tau from the teth. So two things to help distinguish the tau from the teth. Notice the tau has that little bit of a hook at the end of its leg. And then also here at the top corner, there's a little bit of that tittle extending beyond the left leg. The chayth does not have that. It does not have either the hook, nor does it have the tittle. And so that is the alphabet. Now, the final forms as well, we'll go through those. So we have, first of all, the final calf. Notice what I'm going to do here. I'm starting at the top left, coming on over to the top right, curving down and coming below the line. And so that is how you write the final calf. Then as well, we're going to have the final, yep. so the final mem here. 
So again, I'm going to start at that top left, come over to the top right, square corner down, square corner back to the left, and then square corner up. It's basically a square with a little bit of a tittle off to the side. So we have the final calf, we have the final mem, next is the final noon. This as well, just like the, uh, the noon that we have up here, this is a narrow letter. So I'm going to start at the top left, come over to the top right, straight, straight on down. So square corner down below the line. And so that's how we write the final noon. And then we also have the final pay. The pay, like the, the final pay, like the other pay, is going to start in the middle, curve up and around, and come down below the line. And then we also have the final sade. And with the final sade, I'm going to start at the top left, come down below the line, and then at the top right and coming on down at a diagonal to the bottom left. And that gives us the final sade. So these are the letters of the alphabet. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, Hey, Wild, Zion, Keith, Teth, Yoth, Kaf, Lameth, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayan, Pei, Sade, Kof, Reish, Sin, Shin, Tau. And then we have the final calf, the final Mem, the final Nun, the final Pei, and the final Sade. And that brings us to time. So next week we will look at vowels, vowels and syllables. So that'll be a good lesson. Very good. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll be looking forward to uh, hearing some of their responses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Especially when we start getting into the comates and the comates saw too. How do you tell the difference between oh, those yeah. two? Mm -hmm. So. And, uh, They'll be able to distinguish between the flat back and the mm -hmm. comet as well. Exactly, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to stop the recording. So, Sister Rebecca, before you stop recording, yes, may I ask something? Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Today I've known the difference between the letters. Last time I asked about that. But uh, what is special about this language that uh, we can start reading from the right to the left? And uh, that's my first question. And the second question is that, is there any difference between the printable and the written part of the language when we are writing? Uh, okay, so between the printed form and the... Um, the written, the written form that we see here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, just to uh, what what sort of differences are you uh, are you in, uh, speaking about there? When you are writing, because uh, I saw it somewhere that Aleph, when we are writing, is a bit difference from the one which has been printed mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, so there will be some slight differences between the handwritten form and the printed form uh, for instance let me just come on over here to the text of scripture and we can take a look at Genesis 1 1 and you can see the Aleph here especially in Bara and you'll notice that it looks very much like what it was that I wrote but there is a slight difference it's perhaps not quite as curved but um it's going to be like that with any uh, any language that you're dealing with. There will be slight differences between a handwritten form and a and a printed form, and so it just it due to and then also uh, just like one person's 
handwriting is different from another person's handwriting in a language as well. Even if they're writing the same language, it's the same thing also. I mean, if we asked Brother Sheets to to write, it would be different from what mine would look like. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So different fonts, but the same, same value. And then as far as the writing of Hebrew from right to left instead of left to right, um, that was the way, uh, as far as we can tell, that was the way that the Lord built this particular language. And then as we talked about last week, uh, we do see when the alphabet came over to Greece that um, they originally also wrote the alphabet from right to left. And then they went into that transitional period of, of using Boustrophodon. So right to left, and then the next line was left to right, and then the next line was right to left. And then it... Um, changed once again to just left to right, which is what uh, we in English inherited. So it just seems to be that that right to left is the way that the Lord built the language, and then other peoples, as they encountered the alphabet, they shifted directions accordingly. So anything else to add there that we need to... Um, yeah, does that help? Yeah, it helps, sister. Thank you. You're very welcome. Asante. Yeah. Any other yeah. questions? Maybe um, I'll ask the I'll ask the question during the introduction to the Genesis. All right. Yeah, but for the language for today, I'm okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording here and